Nearly 80,000 Americans have died due to COVID-19. Millions of Americans have lost their jobs and had to file for unemployment. And what are Republicans talking about currently? The deficit. They're fear-mongering about the deficit. Now look, we all knew that Republicans would immediately start fear-mongering about the deficit crisis that they created after they gave tax cuts to their rich donors. But, you know, maybe at least during a pandemic, you'd give us a little bit of a break. But no, they have no shame. That mechanism in our brains that makes us feel shameful, that doesn't exist for individuals like Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell. They are literally fear-mongering about the deficit right now. And guess what? There are implications that come with said fear-mongering. They're not just saying, hey guys, maybe we should do something. The solutions that they are going to propose will explicitly hurt you. Not rich people. They're not going to get that money back. The tax cuts that they gave away to their rich friends, they're not going to get that back. They're going to get that money from you, either by cutting into Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, or hurting you in some other roundabout way because this is what the Republican Party does. So according to a Bloomberg report, the flood of pandemic relief spending from Washington has rekindled deficit concerns among Republican lawmakers, one of several hurdles facing the next round of stimulus many economists say is needed to pull the U.S. out of its downward spiral. After kicking back almost $3 trillion to offset the economic impact of the coronavirus pandemic, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and other Republicans now have begun raising alarms about the deficit and characterizing a new relief package as an if- not when proposition. President Donald Trump is also tapping the brakes on the idea of swift action on any new aid package, saying he's in, quote, no rush for a new stimulus even after Friday's Labor Department report showing an unprecedented 20 million jobs were lost in April. With Democrats pressing for another package of relief that will likely carry a trillion dollar price tag, Republicans like Florida Senator Rick Scott are already contemplating how to stem the red ink that's pushed 2020 deficit projection to almost $4 trillion from $1 trillion at the start of this year. We've got to figure out how we're going to pay for it, Scott said in an interview. Otherwise, we're going to ruin this economy. Trump's chief economic advisor, Larry Kudlow, said Sunday that the White House isn't necessarily seeking a delay in new relief legislation. Many people would like to just pause for a moment and take a look at the economic impact of this massive assistance program. That's already passed, Kudlow said on ABC's This Week program. He added that while there are no formal negotiations going on with Democrats, the administration has been talking with members of Congress from both parties about priorities. So what Larry Kudlow is basically saying is, look, we're not necessarily not going to give the peasants any more crumbs. We're just saying, let's just maybe pause while everyone is hurting and think a little bit how maybe we might pay for this one day. Now, there are two very important implications to this. Uh, the first implication is that they don't necessarily want to act and give you more relief, more than crumbs, because they already got what they wanted legislatively. They got a multi-trillion dollar bailout for their corporate donors. So why on earth would they do anything to help you? The sole purpose of the Republican Party is to serve its donors, and nobody does a better job than them. Nobody more is more loyal to their donors than the Republican Party. So what incentive do they have as a party knowing their goal to do anything else, pass any more legislation? They're already starting the deficit fear-mongering. Now, the next implication, of course, is that they're going to have to dip into your money to ameliorate this crisis that they helped create. Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. And they never come out and say this explicitly, right? You kind of have to read between the lines. They say this in a very, you know, backhanded way. They, they never tell you their real agenda because they know it would be really unpopular. But they kind of code, like, cuts to Social Security with uh, rhetoric like, oh, well, let's look at a payroll tax cut. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean let's cut Social Security. But if you put two and two together, you realize that Social Security is funded disproportionately through a payroll tax. So if you cut a payroll tax, then what happens to Social Security? You underfund it, and then, oh, look, it's going insolvent. We're going to have to propose another fix to Social Security, i.e., let's privatize it. So these people are snakes, and they think that they're being sneaky, but we are on to their bullshit because they've done this time and again. Like, the Republican playbook hasn't changed since the 1980s. It's been exactly the same, exactly the same. And you have Donald Trump 
floating relief in the form of a payroll tax cut. Now ask yourself, does it make sense when millions of Americans are losing their jobs and filing for unemployment to offer them a payroll tax as a means of coronavirus relief? If you don't have a job, what value will a payroll tax cut be to you at this point in time? It doesn't make sense, right? Well, of course, he doesn't want you to question it. He's saying, let's do another payroll tax cut uh, because what's that going to do long term? It's going to underfund programs like Social Security. These people are so disgusting in the way that they are constantly trying to covertly undermine these programs. Like, if you want to cut Social Security, just come out and say it. We should cut and privatize Social Security. But they can't do that because they're cowards. They are the biggest cowards on the planet. They talk tough. But behind the scenes, they're always working against you. Always. And with Donald Trump, he's so brazen that on top of proposing a payroll tax cut to help people who are losing their jobs, he also said, hey, maybe we should also cut taxes when it comes to capital gains. Do you know who's going to benefit from this? The mega wealthy. So that's how little they care about you. Not only are they already vocalizing their intention to do not really anything else to help normal Americans because they got what they wanted, you know, they uh, bailed out the uh, special interests, but they're now so brazen that they're proposing tax cuts for the rich. That's what, you know, a tax deduction for capital gains would amount to, a tax cut for the very wealthy. People like Mitt Romney. I mean... I don't know what to say. This party is so irredeemable. Whenever there is a Republican president, they create a deficit crisis, usually with a war or tax cuts for the rich, and then they propose a quote-unquote solution to the problem that they've created, which harms poor people. But here's the thing, and I worry about this because Americans know that, you know, they got $1,200. So they're cognizant of the fact that the federal government is spending a lot of money. They don't necessarily know that trillions of dollars is going to multi-billion dollar companies to bail them out when they don't need it. N nonetheless, you know, Americans know that the government is giving them a check. Therefore, that's lost revenue and they're going to have to make up for it. So maybe they can be persuaded that more austerity tax cuts for uh, the rich as a means of uh, stimulating the economy, generating revenue is uh, going to help. Maybe they can be duped into believing that if we just tried trickle-down economics for the 115th time, it'll work this time. Like, at times of crisis, people are really easily manipulated, right? If you find a politician that is persuasive enough, he or she can exploit them. And that's what I worry about here with the situation, right? Donald Trump, he has a cult that will never leave him. Democrats have a cult that will never leave them. But... I'm thinking like beyond these next four to eight years. How do we get out of this? How do we recover from this um, long term? And I just, I, I don't know. They're fear mongering about the deficit. So, you know, if, if they're already fear mongering about the deficit during a pandemic, then they're kind of giving you a forewarning. They're going to screw you over. The question is, are you going to take this lying down or are you actually going to fight them? Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.